Welcome back to Daily Flash. We're taking a closer look at the life through the lens of Vice TV's Resolved and what really happened to comedian Bob Sackett. The official narrative doesn't tell the whole story. But you really have to look at everything. You still have to go down that rabbit hole. You still have to go down that path. When a celebrity dies, the search for answers moves online. And the truth may be one click away. He went fr through the lobby, he got on the elevator, and there's surveillance video of him going up the elevator, and he got off onto his floor, and his room was at the very end of the floor. So he had to walk all the way past all these other doors. He was carrying a messenger bag. He was looking fine. Welcome, one of the voices of Resolved, our good friend, Steve Helling, joins us in studio. Steve, welcome, welcome. good to good see to you, Good to be here, friends. it's always good to be here. So, I gotta ask you, your take on what happened to Bob Saget. Yeah, well, I mean, okay, th this is gonna be really name droppy here, but I was having dinner with DJ Khaled's brother, and he, he, he looked at his phone and he's like, I just got a text from Jody Sweeten from Full House, and she says that Bob Saget is dead. And we were here in Orlando when it happened, and he's like, it just happened here. So the next thing you know, I was there, um, you know, I was at the hotel. It was a slip and fall. That's what it was. I mean, pure and simple. Now, how you can slip and fall and injure yourself that much is another story. But yes, I mean, it was an accidental death. And as you recall, it was crazy when it happened. Oh, yeah. You know, especially if you were here in, in the Orlando area, you know, Everybody showed up because, you know, Bob Saget was one of those people that you didn't expect to die. No. Like, he, you know, <laughs> you just kind of figured he was always going to be around. Exactly, so, you know. yeah. Eternal. <laughs> exactly. So. so tell us about the show Resolved. Yeah, so Resolved is one of those shows where, you know, there are a lot of celebrity deaths, as you know, that there are questions about, you mm -hmm. know. And so we uh, go through and we kind of go look at all the police reports. We look at the autopsy reports and we kind of try and figure out what happened on some of these cases that are that, that, that there are questions about. I know one of the big cases that you have uh, definitely focused your interest on, the Idaho murders. Yes. Let's talk mm -hmm. about that case. Yeah, so I've been working on that. You know, I was with People Magazine and when that happened, and so I was, you know, I wrote their cover stories on it. Um, you know, I'm still following that. I'm still going to Idaho. I'm still figuring out what happened. There's another hearing that's coming up in May that kind of surprised us. We didn't expect that. Um, and, you know, so that's happening this month, but we don't know what it is, so... Talk to me about this roommate, because it seems like a mm -hmm. lot of the attention right now is on the roommate who saw the shadowy figure, but then when she went to bed and woke up later, she discovered the gruesome crime scene. There was a right. lot of people asking questions. Well, how in the world did you not call the cops when you saw this shadowy figure? What is your theory behind this? I don't know that it's a theory as much as it's kind of... Um... You know, I don't know. I don't know yeah. what was going through her head. I like to think I would have called the cops if I saw somebody, you know, sure. dressed in black who I didn't recognize coming into the house. Um, but it had been a good night. And, you know, it, she may not have been operating in all cylinders. She may have been drunk. She may, you know, I think that actually I shouldn't say she may have been. She had been drinking. Okay. Um, so there was that. You know, I think, you know, a lot of, a lot of times when you're young, you don't, see things the way that maybe us older people would see it because <laughs> I'll call the cops for anything you yeah. know you step on my law and I'll, I'll call the cops that guy. but you know she, uh, so I think she didn't know what to do so she just kind of closed the door um, but it is questionable and it is still a little bit it sounds fishy um, but you have to kind of you know, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what her explanation is. Right. And again, like you mentioned, she's a college kid who, you know, when you're party, partying, sometimes mm -hmm. your mind isn't in the, the, the best space. Right. To exactly. Make good judgments. <laughs> exactly. What about the connection between the alleged murderer and the victims? Yeah. Well, you know, what we're looking at here is somebody who went to a school that was nearby. And, you know, there are many documented stories of him being creepy for lack of a better term, sure. you know, creepy following girls, you know, staring at them, going to where they work, you know, sending them messages on Instagram. And it seems like at least one of these girls was unfortunately somebody who he was interested in. Whether or not he took the, the murderous step, we'll, we'll see that in court. Why do you think we're so obsessed with true crime? Because, you know, it, 
we're obsessed by people in this world who get very lucky, and we're also obsessed by people who are very unlucky, and this is an unlucky one. And I think we're obsessed by it just because we want to know what happens. Everybody likes a mystery, yeah. and this is a mystery in real life. I mean, we always have to remember these are real people, and there's real people grieving, but yes, I mean, there is some level of interest of, you know, what happened. I want to see if I can figure it out, um, which is something that we all try to do. I'm trying to figure it out. Anytime there's something, I try and figure it out. We're all puzzle solvers, exactly. really, at the end of the day. <laughs> exactly, and we all want to be the ones who are like, I know what happened. Yeah, so, of course. Yeah. Well, Steve, it's always great to see you. Thanks for always coming in. Here. You can find Steve on Instagram, at Steve Helling is the handle, and he's got all the information there. Steve also has got a new gig, senior writer for The Messenger, mm -hmm. so we're looking forward to seeing all of that. Steve, great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, stay with us. Daily Flash continues in just a moment. For more information on Steve, you can also head to our website, dailyflashshow.com.